So earlier today, I posted a video about how Tucker Carlson wants to make Marjorie Taylor Greene's trans ban a litmus test for Republicans going forward. And I'd recommend that you check that out because I think it's really important. But I want to further explore the ways in which the rhetoric with regard to LGBTQ plus issues among the far right has escalated substantially. And we're not just talking about bigotry. We're past that point. We're now talking about stochastic terrorism, and we're talking about rhetoric that is explicitly genocidal. So I touched on this issue last week when it comes to the threats that Boston Children's Hospital was receiving after libs of TikTok and Matt Walsh were fear-mongering about the gender-affirming care that they were providing to trans youth. But that hasn't stopped. As Harvard Law's Alejandra Caraballo writes, libs of TikTok has spent the weekend attacking Lurie's Children's Hospital in Chicago by tweeting and retweeting incendiary misinformation six times. Last time they did this, Boston's Children's Hospital received death threats and the FBI got involved. So I need you to know why they're not stopping. It's not like, oh, we feel guilty and we're going to stop. It's not even that. It's they see what they're doing. They see the effect that they're having and they want that to be the effect. The goal here is to harass and intimidate so that way doctors and parents feel disinclined from seeking out gender affirming care or providing gender affirming care, as is the case with doctors to trans youth. That is the ultimate goal. But we're talking about a multitude of tactics here. And by the way, that is stochastic terrorism, what Libs of TikTok is doing, and Twitter has not taken action, even if it is the case that that is not freedom of speech. If you incite harassment and violence, that is not protected speech. But yet it continues to happen and somebody is going to get killed. But I want to talk about other tactics that individuals within the far right movement are doing to punish people for being who they are. So let's talk about Crystal Alonso. This is a member of a group called Moms for Liberty, and this group has been able to successfully not only cancel LGBTQ plus events, pride events, but they've also managed to get hundreds of pro LGBTQ books banned from schools. Now, Crystal has a recommendation as to how lawmakers could handle education and dealing with the existence of queer children going forward. Let's watch. You know, I was just thinking about that the kids that do have their, you know, they're confused or they are gay or whatnot, that the way that they're trying to go about it is to make it an open conversation, an open thing in classrooms. But like, for example, children with autism down syndrome they have to have special iep meetings with a counselor they have to be put into separate classrooms and i understand because it's a different type of education for children with those disabilities but i think that for children that identify differently there should also be like a specialized something for them so they feel that they're important enough that they're being counseled. And why not have that conversation that you're explaining in front of everyone? I think for the same reason why teachers wouldn't just bring a child with autism in front of the class and be like, hey, he's got autism. Mm -hmm. Embarrassment. Um, but what is in your eyes embarrassing about being gay? It's not that it's something to be embarrassed about, but you, I mean, I'm sure that you understand a lot of kids that are young and feel gay, some of them are shamed. Because they, they don't feel really talk that, about it in their classroom. Right, which I understand, but there's just a way to go about it that everybody is respected see it's not that she doesn't want icky queer kids around her straight kids it's that you know we want to protect these queer kids so we should segregate them put them in different classrooms because that's what is needed now children who are developmentally disabled they are in special classrooms because those teachers specifically are trained to deal with the needs that they have, unique needs, address their unique circumstance. But when it comes to queer kids, they're similarly situated to their heterosexual peers, so there's no reason to separate them unless you don't want them around your kids. It's like we have an example of this somewhere in history, but I can't quite place it. Now, Crystal isn't alone in making that recommendation because another individual, a GOP operative, if you will, and friend, according to him, of Kerry Lake, the GOP candidate of Arizona, also made the recommendation that maybe we should uh, separate um, queer people for a very good reason, according to him. Let's watch. You know, this monkeypox is serious, you know. We need to uh, quarantine and isolate all the folks of the LGBT community. We need to find all of them. We need to hunt them down and put them into isolation camps for their own protection. Um, you know, monkeypox needs to, we have to stop the spread somehow. So 
uh, the best way is probably to, you know, find all the LGBT folks and, you know, put them in camps, something like that. Something like that. So hunt them down and put them in camps. Hmm. It's almost like there's another example of this happening in history again. Maybe you think, wow, perhaps they're just historically ignorant and they haven't learned from the past. Oh, no, no, no. They know. They've learned from the past. And they've learned that those tactics are very effective at eliminating people who you view as inferior to you. Now, if this guy looks familiar, that was Ethan Schmidt Crockett. He claims to be a good friend of Republican gubernatorial nominee Carrie Lake, and she followed him on Instagram before he was banned. So, I mean, I have no reason to not believe him. Now, you also probably recognize him because he recently went viral on TikTok for demanding that PetSmart employees take down pride flags. Now, this isn't the only psycho associated with Carrie Lake as she endorsed Republican nominee for Oklahoma State Senate, Jaron Jackson, who claims that the existence of Jewish people is evidence that evil exists in the world and implied that Christ will, quote, shock those kinds of people along with communists, the Illuminati, and the Rothschilds, and they'll be chucked into the fire specifically. So she keeps associating with Nazi types, but, you know, I guess it's just a coincidence. Now, speaking of Oklahoma candidates, let's get to another story where uh, this individual has decided to not denounce comments he made not too long ago, where he says we should definitely stone gays. And we're not talking about giving them free marijuana because that would be delightful. We're talking about actually killing them specifically because they are homosexual. As Carmen Foreman of the Oklahoman explains, Republican Scott Esk, 56, who faces Gloria Bannister in Oklahoma State House District 87, has made headlines lately for old Facebook comments he made in which he wrote, gay people are worthy of death and we would be totally in the right to stone them. He has defended the comments that he made in 2013 that surfaced when he unsuccessfully ran for a different house seat in 2014. When contacted this week, Esk complained about a 2014 article about him in the Oklahoman that he called a hit piece. Although he did not elaborate on the content of the story, Esk declined an interview about his campaign and directed the Oklahoman to videos he posted on his YouTube page. Quote, I've stood up for what is right in the past and I intend to in the future and I am right now, he said. That's got me in trouble. The media are not my friends as far as I'm concerned. So in other words, his views have not changed and he still unapologetically believes that gays are worthy of death and it's justifiable for them to be stoned. Yeah, but you can breathe a little bit easier knowing that he claims he would not make it a law in the state of Oklahoma to extend the death penalty to homosexuals. Whew, I was getting worried there for a second. He just thinks that it's justifiable if the gays are stoned, but don't actually do it. He's not going to make that legal. Whew, I'm so glad he's a reasonable person here. Now, it's not just gays and trans people who are the targets of fascists in the United States because other marginalized people are always the targets. We talked about the way that they are anti-Semitic, but they also are targeting women lately. As Chuds of TikTok, the good of TikTok account points out that before Florida State House candidate Luis Miguel was banned from all of social media, well, he called for the death penalty for women who got abortions. Oh, and he also wanted to legalize the murder of FBI agents, IRS agents, and agents at the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. So on one hand, you know, he says we should protect innocent lives, which is why we should murder women who get abortions, but also it should be legal to shoot, presumably to kill federal agents. This is the GOP, but look, not everyone in the GOP, to be fair, is as extreme as that. Some of them are more, quote, moderate, such as Tudor Dixon. She is the Republican gubernatorial nominee in Michigan, and when asked if 14-year-old rape victims should be forced to have their rapist's baby, her answer was essentially, yes, they should be forced to have their rapist's baby, arguing that rape victims often find healing through the baby when we force them to have said baby and claims that they often have strong bonds with their rapist's baby, therefore they shouldn't have the choice to abort it. Have your rapist's baby and you'll love it later. This is what they're saying. No choice for you. And this is the more reasonable position, apparently, because at least she's not saying, oh, well, we should kill that 14-year-old if she gets an abortion, right? I mean, she hasn't said this, but this is what we're dealing with now. Do you understand? A few years ago, I think that it was reasonable to deduce that the majority of the Republican Party were proto-fascists. But nowadays, that is no longer correct. They are no longer proto-fascists. They are fascists, period, full stop. They are violent. 
And they're calling for violence increasingly so. They're doing violence increasingly so. They pose a threat to normal Americans increasingly so. And their rhetoric has become genocidal. Now, the only question is, when are they going to actually carry out said genocide? They're starting to do that legally with bills introduced by Marjorie Taylor Greene and being promoted by fascist propagandists like Tucker Carlson. But when does it actually get worse? We're in the midst of that right now. We're in the middle of getting worse. Now, you know, of course, everyone would be alarmed if they started to literally round up LGBTQ plus people and started to kill them. But what we're seeing right now is them just slowly but surely turning up the heat. And we're a frog in that boiling pot. But we can't acknowledge how bad it is because it's getting worse slowly. So they're turning up the heat slowly. They're not going to jump too far. But I still want you to notice the demonstrable difference from their rhetoric now and just a couple of years ago. Times are changing fast. The rise of fascism is a threat to all life in the United States and across the globe. And it's not just happening here in the United States. It's happening in other countries as well. We've witnessed the rise of a global fascist movement. And you need to be aware of this. Because if you don't push back, if you don't try to stop it, then it may be too late. So pay attention to their rhetoric and how violent it has become. And it should absolutely worry all of us.